Hello and welcome to the NARC Alert, the channel where we look at YouTubers and others to see if they demonstrate any traits that fall within the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. These videos are for fun and entertainment purposes only, strictly my opinion, and remember, please don't send any snark to our possible narcs. So key points to remember, messy fun, and not a diagnosis. Hello, my lovely lurts, and welcome back to the Narc Alert. I hope everyone's week is going fantastic, and if it's not, well, it's just one more day till Friday. I thought this week we would do a little extra Amber video, since her latest video seemed just a little juicier than normal. So let's jump right in. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So we are on Let's Talk number 10. We have made it into double digits. That's pretty freaking amazing if you ask me. She never misses an opportunity to shout herself out. Amber is proud of doing her job, which consists of talking about herself for 10 days. So I know you guys can see my door. I have cats, so they decided to, you know, have fun with the, uh, the blinds, if you will. So ignore that. So how are you guys doing? I'm actually having a pretty decent day. Today is actually my mom's birthday. So mom, if you're watching this, happy freaking birthday. I love you to death, literally. And I'm so freaking proud of you. You have no idea. And I just, I look up to you and you give me hope that just anything is possible. People who show traits of NPD like to show us how loved they are by others. This seems a message better sent privately. She mentioned not even knowing if her mom was watching. It feels orchestrated to illustrate her loving relationship with her mother. Okay, so now let's get into the questions. How do you think years of hateful comments on YouTube has changed you as a person? And do you think if you had a regular job outside of the house, would you have gained so much weight? Basically, do you think YouTube is good for your mental and physical health? So I'm going to start with the beginning of the question about the hateful comments and how has that changed me as a person. This might not make a lot of sense, but it's made me stronger, but it's also made me weaker. Like I used to hate the quote, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but it's true. The comments, the hate, the bullying, the harassment, it has happened so often. It's so frequent. It's a literal 24 seven thing. Like I can't go on any social media without seeing something really bad about myself. She gets an outrageous amount of bad comments, but she entertains them so they will persist. It makes no sense if something has successfully made you stronger, how it then also makes you weak. It is word salad nonsense. So it's made me stronger and weaker in that sense because it's like, wow, okay, so am I really like this horrible, disgusting person that these people think I am. So then I start to believe it the more I see it, which makes me weaker, which me, makes me dislike myself more. I begin to start hating myself because I'm seeing these things and I'm starting to believe these things. But then there's like a whole other boss ass bitch attitude where I become numb to it, where I'm just like, oh, this again. Like it makes me stronger because it's happening so consistently. It's like giving me tougher skin, if you will. It has been almost a decade. If at any point you are second guessing who you are due to random internet comments, you have not developed a thick skin and are unlikely to at this point. I don't know, it's like, it's weird. I have never been this hated in my whole entire life. Like people in my real life do not hate me like this. So to be hated by thousands or disliked by thousands or to let thousands down, it does put a lot of pressure on me. And I don't think that YouTube is exceptional for my health. But honestly, I feel like any job that I would have would give me some sort of stress. So I like to think of it as, okay, this is just a stressful part of my job. I try not to let it get me down as much as I know it could if I would just like submerge myself into that. So I try my hardest to kind of separate reality with YouTube a little bit. I don't know, it gets kind of messy. Second part of your question, do I think I would have gained so much weight if I had a regular job? 
honestly, if we're being like completely realistic, I feel like if I had like a regular job where I had to leave the house, I don't think it, I would have had such a huge opportunity to reach almost 600 pounds. I'm not gonna blame YouTube. I'm just gonna blame the fact that I haven't really had routine in my life for years. It's almost like I haven't really had a purpose, if you will. That kind of goes deeper and more personal than just like, oh, I don't have a regular, you know, nine to five job. It goes more into it. But I do feel like not having that job and that reason and that purpose to leave the house every single day probably played a big role in my weight gain. Word salad translation? Yes. Getting up every day, having a purpose, moving to go to and from work and interacting with humans off the internet would have been better for you than sitting at home and eating on YouTube for a decade. Serious question. As you said, the cycle doesn't exist any longer. Do you really feel you are still in phase one? So if we're going based off of the phase chart, the cycle chart, the chart that Hater Nation created, it does look like I'm going through the cycle. It does look like I am kind of in the mixture of like a phase two, maybe a phase three. So I wouldn't say that I'm in phase one. Jokes aside though, I hate this whole cycle phase situation because you guys, it almost is like I am being mocked for my mental illness, which is frustrating because it's also like, wow, I'm also being mocked because of my eating disorder, which has been happening a lot lately. And it's so weird that like when you come to my channel, it's totally fine. It's like a place for people to bash me, bash mental illnesses, bash eating disorders. This is a false narrative she's creating to evoke pity. She does get horrible comments, but people are not on mass bashing mental health disorders. Fat shame, like it's become accepted in my comment section, but if it was to happen anywhere else on YouTube, it wouldn't be okay. Like a shorter skirt, like in the front, and then the back of it is just kind of like super long, and I don't know, it's really cool. It's just like, yeah, they just kind of like flare out. Um, also, the skirt is like very, very glittery, guys. So I don't know if you guys can. So every time people talk about this whole cycle and face thing. I, I truly feel like I'm being slapped in the face and like I'm being mocked. Next question, have you considered going to rehab center for eating disorders to help with the weight loss? Tammy from A Thousand Pound Sisters has lost a lot of weight from going to rehab. First of all, I wanna say congratulations to Tammy because she did lose 100 pounds in 30 days. That's amazing. She did that while being at a rehab facility. A lot of people have been comparing us saying, you know, if Tammy could do it, you could do it. And I'm just like, I'm not in a rehab center, so it's a big difference. And this is like no Tino shade, but she is a little bit bigger than me. The more bigger you are, the faster you can lose weight. Tammy Slayton is a few pounds heavier, but I suspect once you are in the class three obesity range, a few pounds is negligible. Of course, people with NPD must remind you that they are special and different. She is above Tammy. Could I lose 100 pounds in 30 days? Probably if I starve myself, Do like, it. yeah. But I hate when people like sit there, they get so mad at me for comparing myself to other YouTubers, but like y'all compare me to other fat people like all the time. Not every single fat person is created the same. We are all completely different people. But I will say that watching A Thousand Pound Sisters, Tammy's story really truly hits me in the feels. I cried the episode where she got put into a coma, like I literally cried. The only time Amber cries is for herself. She's touched by Tammy's story because she relates to it. She cries not for Tammy, but for fear it could be her one day, I suspect. I was feeling so emotional and I want nothing but the best for Tammy. And by the looks of it, rehab is working very well for her, but Using Tammy as an example from what I've seen through the episodes, once she left rehab, you know, she gained all the way back. Rehabs do not always work the first time. Tammy did gain back after her first visit. She wasn't ready to be there and she left early. In her second attempt, she's been highly successful. It works if you do the she work. She wasn't under the supervision of professionals. She wasn't 
restricted, if you will. Like being in rehab, like you're kind of restricted into your own. Like you don't have the freedom like it is like when you're at home, obviously. So it's like all the hard work that she went through the first time she went to rehab kind of just like went away. And using that example, that's very much exactly what would happen. So Amber, who hates being compared to others with weight issues, assumes every person's rehab experience is the same. She also chooses Tammy's failure to compare to and not Tammy's success. Amber speaks as if rehab is done to you, not to help you and give you tools. So for I'm going to explain my thought process on this. I've actually thought about this before long and hard. I was like, is rehab right for me? I'm sure I'll do great while in rehab. I'm sure I'll lose tons of weight and I'll be following plans, going to the meetings, doing everything that they want me to do. People with traits of NPD always assume they will do great at things that they have never attempted. But none of that matters unless I do it all outside of rehab. And I know myself literally being restricted like that inside of a rehab the minute the minute i come back home binge city is about to happen she has already decided to fail she speaks of rehab as if she is chained to a table to starve it teaches you tools to cope with being outside of rehab it's what they do so no rehabs it's not going to help me what does support mean to you when you talk about your girlfriend without actually demanding me, cause she doesn't demand me. She urges me more than literally anybody I've ever had in my whole entire life. She wants me to find a plan and just stick to it. The same person said, I'm going through weight loss myself and my partner would never, never let me have takeout on consecutive days. See, this is where people are confused. Ah, the classics. If you're criticizing her, it is because you are wrong, you just don't understand. She urges me not to do those things, but just because she is supporting me in the process of my weight loss journey, and obviously she doesn't want me to binge, she also doesn't have handcuffs to like handcuff me to the couch so I won't put food in my mouth. She's not tying me up to chairs so I don't open the Uber app. Like she can't stop me from doing something that I want to do or that I have the urge to do. She congratulates me when I lose weight. So did Becky. Even when it was clear that Amber had lost little to no weight, it's normal, not special. Clearly the honeymoon is over and the life-altering support and happiness is gone. Like she actually is thrilled for me when I'm like, okay, I wanna walk to the mailbox six times. And I remember this distinctively, like I stopped at the fifth one and she looked at me and said, babe, I know you can do it. Let's do this. She grabbed my hand and she went with me and I did it. You know, if it wasn't for her doing that, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have reached my goal of doing six. And that is the heart of Amber's entire issue. She wants everyone else to do the hard work for her so she can enjoy her life. You have to do this alone and for yourself. Anyone else would have just been like, Oh, I totally get it. Like, you're totally tired. Let's go back inside. And then when I fail, she does the tough love thing sometimes. And sometimes I have to tell her I can't do tough love. But like, when I gain weight or I say I'm going to exercise and I don't do it. She's very patient with me. She's understanding in my struggles. I'm. She's never been with someone my size. She's never been with someone with that has issues with food like I do. This sounds like bad foreshadowing to me. Most people only have so much patience, and the girlfriend is already trying a tough love approach and getting pushback. Add in the fact that this is a new experience for her to be with a housebound 500-pound person. This cannot be sustainable. So I know it's a little new for her, but she motivates me to keep going. In the way that she is the way that she voices her congratulations and her just being proud of me, but then she voices her concerns. It's hard to explain. Like she's super level headed in this way, which I feel like I'm not. So I don't know. It kind of helps with the dynamic, but y'all, you can't sit here and say 
that me binging or me ordering takeout or me having McDonald's is her fault because it's no one's fault but my own. You gave her 100% of the credit for doing well. It is only natural that she would now be held responsible for your failures. Like there have been several times where I was about to eat something that would either put me into me going way over my calories or that was going to trigger me to binge or anything like that. And she has stopped me. Like I'm not used to having someone there who makes me second guess, like, should I be ordering this? I've just always been surrounded with people who are like, oh, okay, also, um, when you order your 20-piece nugget, can you also get me some too? People with NPD always think that their lives and struggles are first and foremost in everyone's minds. It is not anyone's responsibility to watch what you eat except yourself. Like, that's not how it is. Like, she's very like, are you freaking sure? Like, and then she'll like weigh out the pros and cons. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I think that you guys would just have to like simply see the dynamic because me explaining it, like I feel like I'm being very lousy at that right now. The love bombing has worked and Amber is slotting in the new partner right into the caretaking role that Becky left. If a loved one had a severe drug addiction and you watched them try and fail for years to overcome it, would you encourage them to seek treatment in a rehab facility or would you think they could figure it out on their own? Very crazy question because my parents are drug addicts, my brother's a drug addict. I hear this as a question being posed to her about her issues. But as someone with NPD traits, she's at no fault in her life and applies this to her family instead. Like, that is why I said in the beginning of this, my mom is the very reason why I know that people can change. Like, it's unbelievable the person she is today. She has been sober for over six years now. I, I saw my parents go through, my dad and my brother currently are still stuck in their drug addiction and I love them so much and I do constantly tell them to go to rehab. So rehab is effective for everyone else except Amber. She is special. You're right. I've always said that. Even when I was younger, I urged my mom to go. Always, always, always have. And... The thing is with rehab, they have gone. My dad's gone, my brother's gone several times. And it only works if you want it to work. She is telling us very clearly she does not want to lose weight. She stated rehab works if you want it to work, and she does not. I often wonder if her inner narcissist likes being her size. It is the only thing that truly makes her unique. Like, of course, there's a very high chance you're gonna be sober in rehab, but then what happens when you're out of rehab? It's just a messy situation, it's a sticky situation, and I think for a lot of people who don't struggle with addiction, telling us to go to rehab is just like a very easy thing to say, and it's a lot more harder to actually do. Once again, Amber is the expert on things she has no idea about and has never tried. I just want nothing but the best for Tammy. I want Tammy Slayton to be a success story because now that, that right there would inspire thousands of people and I would be one included for sure. The narcissist wants to inspire always. Can we be happy for Tammy because she will be healthy and happy? That is enough. You stated before that when you binge, you're not in a good headspace. So I'm wondering what's bothering you so much. Yeah, uh, really good question. <laughs> I do tend to binge more when I am in a bad headspace. I haven't really been taking my medicine right, and I know I come on here and I seem to say that a lot, but I think you guys can notice I do so much better when I'm taking my medicine. You have to be fairly arrogant to start to preach about medications when you rarely take your own. I take medicine for anxiety, obviously my estrogen pill I have to take, and the main thing I feel like that's really messing with me is my mood stabilizer because I am bipolar. So when I'm not taking those three things and I'm not taking them right, y'all, like I've gone a week without taking a single one. Like, do not look at me as a role model. Like, please. If you are prescribed medicine, Take it, take it right. I'm sorry if I keep messing with my hair. My hair is actually really annoying me today. So that is like the biggest thing. And then there's just like 
some things going on in my real life that are just like stabbing holes in my little happiness balloon and it's like taking the air out of my happiness balloon if that makes sense so yeah I do have some things going on in my eating I feel like kind of reflects on that so she is saying her ability to control her eating is fully dependent on her happiness she will never take responsibility no one is always happy therefore she always has a reason to fail in Berlin if you have narcissistic tendencies then you are in fact a narcissist no, that's that's literally not how it works. <laughs> so now that you have lost some weight and you talk a lot about 2019 being the hardest year, can you tell us some things that you haven't told us before about being at your heaviest weight? Oh boy, um, there's quite a few things that I could tell you guys. There's one thing that to me, okay, no. There's two things. There's two things I'm going to tell you um, that to me, like, should have been a wake up call besides me getting diagnosed with cancer. It is amazing to hear someone gloss over a cancer diagnosis, especially given she has never had the required test to clear her. But to Amber, jumping on the bed is a wake up call. Because in bed now, like I'm rolling around, I'm plopping, jumping, like I'm just like, I feel like a completely different person. It is so weird. And I know I'm down only like 80 plus pounds, but it feels like I'm down a couple hundred. And I know a lot of people are like, how come you act like you've lost so much weight when you haven't? Anyone who criticizes her gets personified by the same childish mocking tone. Once again, ensuring we know how superior she is to us. It's just how it feels. It's literally how it feels. It's so very non-scale victory. Like, okay, yeah, cool. I'm down over 80 pounds, which feels fucking amazing, but it feels like I'm down like 300. Like, it is so weird. I can't quite explain it. I'm living for it though, and it excites me to lose more. But anyways, okay, back to what I'm saying. So I'm like flopping around in bed. I'm doing the do, like I'm a normal person in bed. Like I'm sleeping on my side, I'm sleeping on my back. I'm rolling around like a, a damn basketball, okay? But at my heaviest, I could not roll onto my side at all. Um, I just couldn't. I, I don't know why. I mean, I know why, like fat as fuck, high, but I don't, I don't understand why it was so difficult. Like I literally couldn't do it. So I was always, always, always sleeping, sitting up. The level of denial is insane. She says she knows she could not roll over due to her size and without taking a breath, she follows with, but I really don't know why. She seems to see herself as a few pounds overweight, not hundreds. Which now I sleep in every way. I'm sharing this because not only am I proud of how far I've come in the middle of all my trolling. Okay, yes, I troll. Whatever, trolling has entered the chat. Trolling is fucking fun, okay? Like, I am obsessed with being the troll queen. Like, literal trolling entered the chat. If by trolling she's referring to her recent videos that show her overeating garbage on a daily basis and destroying her life and body for clicks, then yes, she is the queen. Um, so, now that we're here, <laughs> I shower every single day. I honestly love showering. I love feeling the water just run down over me. I love singing in the shower, singing in the shower. And the fact that I can sing in the shower, let alone sing Skyscraper by Demi Lovato and like not be out of breath while hitting those high ass notes just goes to show like, wow, okay. She really is her own biggest fan. Not only can she now shower on the reg, she sings like Demi Lovato. You're doing your thing, Amberlynn. So being able to do that with literally no issue, like I'm able to clean my body with no issue. I'm able to stand with no issue. Like I'm just like a normal person in the shower besides like I'm fat and all. And the reason why I'm mentioning, mentioning this is because in 2018, I couldn't shower at all. There was a large 
portion of 2019, if not the whole 2019, where I literally couldn't shower. Um, I bathed in bed. I bathed in bed. Um, that's so hard to say. Okay, so I'm sharing this because I'm proud of how far I've come. Although the details are new, this is a non-confession. Everyone was well aware she was bedbound in 2019. There's no reason for her to share this humiliation besides clicks and views. Becky and I promised not to talk about each other, but like she was there for me through it all. And it's like, so grateful that she loved me unconditionally like that because you guys, I hated myself so much. But yeah, I would bathe in bed and it wouldn't even be frequently. Um, wow, okay, so. But I would bathe in bed and like Becky would get a like container and she would put hot water and soap in it for me and I would tell her to leave the room and um, I would do what I could. Um, I know there's a lot of like rumors that Becky helped me bathe and stuff no <laughs> only after my hysterectomy she is still trying to convince us that although bed bound she did it all herself if becky is bringing you soap and tubs of water and towels you are not bathing alone but um i would never i wouldn't let her i was ashamed i would cry the whole time like it was just like so now, me standing in the shower with the water running down and, like, me singing, like, it's a whole aspect of my day that, like, I used to, like, I used to want so bad. Oh, my God. Like, people take that shit for granted. Like, just, like, little things like that, like... Yes, Amber, we all take showering for granted. Maybe if you stuck to a plan, things could change. Well, there you have it, our look at Amber's deepest, darkest secret. Were you surprised? Do you think she's going to tell us more? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you again for joining me. Please come and check out the Discord that I share with Kicking Geese. It's so much fun. You can find the link in the description. And if you're so inclined, grab a membership or check out the Patreon. Thanks for listening. And until we meet again, be kind and hasta luego.